The final speaker of this session is Dr. Jessica Soralski. She'll be doing a case discussion. Great. Thank you to all of the um, organizers for inviting me today. We're going to start with the ARS slide. So I would like this to be interactive. So I'm just going to put up how to respond to the questions. There's going to be some ARS questions. Um, access the mobile, aao.org slash mobile. Look for the cornea meeting and interact with this session. Thanks. OK. So I have no relevant financial disclosures. This is a 13-year-old girl who was otherwise healthy and presented four weeks prior to presenting to us with left eye pain. She was diagnosed by an ophthalmologist while she was on vacation as a corneal abrasion and given topical moxifloxacin. Of note, she was in Florida on a trip, contact lens wearer, and she had been exposed to hot tubs and pools. So she wasn't getting better, went back to the ophthalmologist and they noted an infiltrate. They cultured her and switched her to fortified uh, Vanco and Tobra. She still wasn't getting better, and cultures were negative to date. So I don't have a picture of what she looked like at this point, but this is a young girl, large ulcer, getting worse on fortifieds. So what could this be? Could it be an atypical bacterial infection? Maybe this isn't bacteria at all. Maybe this is herpetic. She has a contact lens wearer. She was in water. Is it parasitic, fungal? Maybe there's a non-infectious cause. So pull out your phones. What are you going to do next? Are you going to A, empirically treat with an antiparasitic, B, empirically treat with antifungals, C, empirically treat with antivirals, D, repeat cultures and possibly perform a corneal biopsy, or E, confocal? Okay, great. So a lot of people, culture and confocal. Absolutely. I think one great thing that I like to emphasize here, and maybe I'm cynical, but I never trust a negative culture from somebody else. Repeat those cultures yourself. This was eight years ago before a lot of the confocal studies have really been um, brought, brought to our attention, but I think both of those are great options. She was still in Florida at this point. She went to another physician. They thought this was herpes, put her on antivirals and topical steroids, still getting worse. Decided to fly back to New York. Next physician thought she had acanthamoeba, put her on antiparasitics, still no improvement, getting worse. Finally went for her fourth opinion. This physician repeated the cultures, uh, got a few days, we didn't get any results, went on to a corneal biopsy, and eventually did an amniotic membrane tarsorophy for impending perforation. This is what she looked like when she came to me for the fifth opinion four weeks after her initial symptoms. Keep in mind, this is a 13-year-old girl, almost limbus to limbus infection. Uh, hard to judge depth here, but there were some areas that were definitely thinned. Luckily for me, the physician before me did a great culture. This came back as fusarium, and she was sent to me only on a couple days of a topical antibiotic moxifloxacin and natamycin. She did have a bad new left-sided headache. We were worried about extraocular extension, got an MRI, which was negative. Retina did a B scan. We admitted her to the hospital. We're lucky that we have a great infectious disease team at Cornell. They love eye infections. So our fungal <laughs> expert came in and helped us with this. But what are you guys going to do? Uh, we just heard a great talk from Dr. Sharma. Are you going to treat with that topical natamycin alone? Hard to tell if there's really been any traction here. It's only been a couple of days. You're going to switch that to Vori. Or are you going to keep her on nata and add an IV um, azole or topical nata, second antifungal and an IV? or go straight to PK. So pull out your phones and vote. Great. Um, so a lot of people, topical anatomycin, a second topical on IV azoles. And that is exactly what we did. So I think for these complex cases, it's nice to have uh, double or triple coverage. So we all know from the MUT trial, looking at 
uh, filamentous fungal keratitis, natamycin versus vori, natamycin really had better clinical and microbiological outcomes, especially for fusarium. So we kept her on the NADA, added topical ampho, IV vori, and kept her on a topical broad-spectrum antibiotic. We admitted her so we could do really intense treatments and IV um, antifungals. We continued this for seven days as an inpatient and let her um, go home, but we followed her very closely. On day three post-hospital stay, so 10 days on treatment, there was a small perforation. And so we went to the OR. I did a large PK and gave her intercamerals. So our last ARS question, you know, how long are you going to keep her on topical antifungals, assuming there's no recurrence and that she epithelial, epithelial of sizes? <laughs> Two to four weeks, A. B, four to eight weeks. C, eight to 12. Or D, more than 12. Yeah, so it's pretty mixed. And, and I think um, a lot of people do this differently, um, depending on, on response and what kind of ulcer it is and if there's pre-op uh, high-risk characteristics. So if we can go back to my slides. So for what we do for systemic antifungals, I usually keep them on for two weeks. And then I consider continuing longer if there's pre-op um, high-risk characteristics, which I'll go through in the next slide. For topicals, I taper over 8 to 12 weeks, and that's assuming there's no recurrence and that the patient um, does have epithelialization. I do like to do surveillance conj cultures to make sure I'm really killing all of that from the ocular surface in a broad-spectrum topical anti uh, bacterial. And the reason I do it this long is there is a high rate of recurrence. Even with a lot of our great medications, even surgical, there's a high rate of recurrence. And a lot of these are seen early within those first two weeks. And if you have risk factors, that recurrence is more common. And uh, the risk factors are in red. And our patient had four of these, pre-op steroids, pre-op hypopion, pre-op perforation, and a large diameter infection. So really high risk. So eight to 12 weeks for this patient. So how'd she do? Pretty well initially, pinhole into 2060, pressure was good, but then she started to reject and the pressure went up. We got glaucoma involved, she was able to be stabilized on topical and oral um, anti-glaucoma medications, and we also started topical cyclosporin. Eventually, we did an optical graft at six months, and we did a smaller graft within the bigger graft, as well as a glaucoma tube. Six years later, she's now a junior in college. Uh, pressure's fine. She's 2070 in glasses, 2040 in an RGP, which she refuses to, to wear, understandably. Um, and vision is ultimately limited by cataract. So we all know fungal keratitis can be devastating. Look for these. They're often recognized really late in uh, the course of these people's disease. Uh, difficult to diagnose, difficult to treat, and you often need a combination of therapies. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Soralski.